Um, thanks to all uh, the speakers this morning. I think they've given me a lot of fuel for my presentation uh, in the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, I'll try, Richard, uh, the best I can to keep it to 30 minutes. Um, really, it's employee talk and bringing social media into the, uh, into the workplace. But we spoke a, a lot about employee engagement this morning. Myself, as the COO of Synchrony, uh, we have a, a, a fairly uh, centric uh, workforce, certainly lots of dynamics around uh, warm and fluffy HR people versus technical skills versus RPO versus a, a lot of other things, and getting all these people motivated in our business and growing the business. Really what I want to touch on, as far as employee engagement, there's lots of people that talk about, well, we engage our employees, we send them corporate communications once a month via email, and that's engaging. Uh, we send out an employee survey once a year and we get good statistics back. Um, we tend to think of it a little bit differently as far as employee engagement goes, and, and certainly the technology that we use to, to encourage that engagement. And I'm gonna to touch on a few things that Gordon and Pinky and others have mentioned this morning around what, what is the, the state of HR and how can we contribute and be recognised at the board level about some of the initiatives that we can bring to the table and the value add that we can, we can do. Um, so certainly from, from my perspective, employee engagement is not just about these surveys and the emails. Uh, it's really about the building our employees to be part of the organisation. It's really, they need to be absorbed and enthusiastic about the business as much as we are at the board level. Um, and certainly have a, a positive action on everything that we do as part of a business. Um, I'm fairly sure the, the gentleman on screen in the picture didn't worry about his per diem too much. He didn't worry about travel allowances. He didn't worry about his flexible benefit package. Um, he was enthusiastic and, and a contributing member of, of what was one of the, the biggest initiatives that we did on the planet and off the planet, obviously, uh, back in 1968. Uh, so a very different dynamic, but again it's all about that absorption and being part of the overall organisation. Perspective, our, our, uh, some of our consulting and technical teams, they don't get overtime, they work until the job's done. They take pleasure in what they do and they look at the organisation and how we can move forward as an organisation. And it's about other people in their particular roles, whether you're in retail, whether you're in, in customs, how do you as an individual, go that extra mile. It's not just for your paycheck, uh, it's how I fit into the overall structure of my company and how I can help drive that company forward. And that's employee engagement. When you have employees that aren't sitting around just waiting for the paycheck, they're not sitting around asking for overtime, they're not sitting around thinking that that's not my job, I'll let somebody else do it. They'll get in there, roll their sleeves up and be an active part of growing our organisation. And that to me is an engaged employee and certainly a positive action by all of our employees is the most critical thing to drive our business forward. So how do we do that? You know, as a HR department, we sit around, many people ask the questions, you know, of a HR department, how can we increase employment engagement? How do we cut down costs on learning? All of these attributes that you see on the screen here really are the questions that HR get asked on a day-to-day -day basis. And we try and come up with initiatives. We try as a HR department to get out there and talk to people about how we can grow the business and how we can positively contribute to our business. Um, and I think that there's lots of creative ways that have come onto the marketplace um, to be able to do something at, at a very low cost, which obviously helps the business in, in many attributes, but has high value to the way that we em in, uh, engage our employees today. Something I'll, I'll touch on a little bit today and certainly something that my team uh, can demonstrate to you outside on, on, the, on the laptops. Uh, we've got some uh, success factors actively uh, working out there as far as demos go. So please call past and, and have a look at uh, what I'm talking about as far as how it looks and how it feels. But really making it easy to contribute Again, as a HR department, it's easy for us to send out emails. But how is that contributing? You're not getting feedback. The most employee engagement activities happen 
when the employees are feeding information back to you. I remember 20 years ago, I, I used to be an aircraft engineer before I got into the HR field 20 plus years ago. Um, not that I'm not 35 years old now, of course, but uh, <coughs> in my previous life, we used to have a little box. We used to have a little slit in the top and employees were encouraged to drop their suggestions into the box and HR on a, on a so-so so regularly basis would go and empty the box and apart from your chocolate wrappers that you'd find in there and what have you, there'd be a few ideas from employees but that was the only way that employees used to be able to communicate with HR. These days we want to make it easy to find information so therefore when we're sending things out as an organisation we want all of our employees to be able to get that information in a timely fashion and, uh, and, and continually increase the awareness of, to the employees what's happening within the organisation. We talk about baby boomers, which Darcy and I are the proud members of that family, um, and Generation X and Y and Millennials and how, how people are different. It's just, they're not different. They really just engage differently in how they want to communicate. If we turned off Facebook, for two days would feel very disconnected from the world because that's how they communicate. And they're not communicating on a weekly drop box. They're not communicating in an employee survey or they're not in, uh, communicating in a, uh, in a corporate email that comes out once a month. To be honest, I never used to read our own corporate emails too often that used to come out. So really they need constant feeding of information to be feeling engaged. So how can we get them fed? with that sort of information. Likewise, at Yahoo, Gordon gave a, a fantastic example before lunch on how a, a very bright entrepreneur was sitting in the ranks of Yahoo um, and he's tweeting the fact that he's unhappy. He's tweeting the fact that he's disengaged. But who was listening? Obviously nobody at Yahoo because he ended up leaving and creating a, a $31 billion company elsewhere, which I'm sure Yahoo looks back off at now and thinks, if only we engaged with this person, the th types of thoughts and ideas that that person could have generated for us could have set us apart from everything else in the field today. So they're the sorts of things that we need to work out. How do we make sure that we've got these vast arrays of talent within our organisations and how can we engage with these people to make sure, one, they stay with us and two, we can tap their information. As HR professionals, we, we spoke earlier this morning also about making impact on the bottom line. How does a HR professional get in front of the board and how can we show them that we can add value and, and affect the bottom line? Most entrepreneurs and, and business people, and that includes HR professionals, have mentors. We all have mentors. Any successful businessman will tell you they had mentors that helped them in the areas that they didn't understand. And some comments uh, before lunch also was to the effect that, you know, we don't know this information, so therefore we're good at HR, we're good tree-hugging people, and we, we understand people, but we're not great with numbers and we're not great in these other areas. To me, I would turn around and say, well, we're just not connected to the right mentors that show us what the business is doing. What's our manufacturing doing? What's our operational part of the business doing? We need to tap into those people and have the tools available to us so that we connect with these people, so that they feed us this information and we can be proactive with the workforce about how we can drive it forward. In the Philippines country, which I'm, I'm very proud to say that I've lived here permanently for the last couple of years but been coming backwards and forwards in the region from an, an eight year period, mobile is very advanced in this country. Everybody has a smartphone, everybody has Facebook and other cloud based solutions on their mobile devices and can communicate freely outside the workforce. As Gordon put, uh, put out there, the, the gentleman, Mr. Aiken at, at Yahoo, he was tweeting. Everybody who was on Twitter knew exactly what he was thinking. So why didn't Yahoo, the organisation, understand what this guy was on about? Why was he so disconnected from the company? So that there's certain tools like Twitter uh, Facebook and these other vehicles for us to vent ourselves, tell everybody in the, in the country what we're having for dinner, 
and what it looks like, you know, going out for a card night, whatever. We're, we're communicating to all of our friends what we're doing. So as an organisation, the company that these people are working for, we need to be able to tap into their thoughts and their feelings about how they can contribute to the business. Certain elements, people talk about performance and goals. It's a great tool to show people where they're building and how it cascades and builds into their, their own personal performance. But I want feedback to come as a HR department, I want feedback to come from these individuals about their ideas, not just around their own personal performance and their own learning and their own abilities as a, an individual to contribute in their role, but how they think and they, their thoughts around how we can grow the business as a whole. They may be a, somebody that, a security guard standing on the front door letting people in and out on a daily basis. They may be the person that cleans the toilets. Everybody in the organisation has ideas and thoughts and if you don't give them a vehicle to be able to express those thoughts, you as a business will fail because you're disengaged from your, your employees. So we've touched on synchrony, we, we do, and certainly Gordon, uh, success factors. We have this product called Jam, which is a social collaboration, but it's really what we like to, to think of as a, a corporate Facebook. This is something that I can share information, content, documents, videos, anything that you wish as content, we can share in a group and multiple groups within an organisation. And this can all be, your HR professionals are linked to these groups, different parts of the organisation, and it's a constant feed of information backwards and forwards. It has neat tools such as polls. For our Christmas party last year, we sent out a poll, please tell us what you want as the theme for the Christmas party. We had 89% engagement for 2,000 people, wanted to vote what they think our theme for Christmas should be. Same with Halloween last year as well. So these tools can be very strong in, in some social activity type events as well. But uh, certainly one of our speakers this morning was talking about flexible benefits. These sorts of HR activities, what is of value to our workforce? I want their feedback. I don't want as a HR department to be sitting there dictating, well, I think Phil Care over Phil Health, or I think people would want gadgets, or would they prefer more salary? These sorts of activities is normally defined by the HR department because they don't have the connection and the feedback from all of the workforce to have that positive impact on, on what we give our employees and how they act as part of the organisation. So JAM enables us to engage with every single person in the company and gives them the vehicle to feed directly back to us their thoughts as well. Now as a management team, I know Darcy and I had this conversation where we rolled out jam. We're going to get some pretty negative comments because you give them a vehicle to feed back information. We have to expect as a, a leadership team that employees may not be happy. But at least it's better to know what they're not happy about than ignoring it, having it tweeted around the world and eventually good employees and great employees can move to other companies. Some of the largest industries in this country, for example, BPO, 1.3 million people in the BPO industry here in the Philippines. Fantastic business in the Philippines, although it's downgraded in some people's minds as a bit of a, a second choice. So you'd much prefer to be a nurse or a doctor or all these sorts. It employs 1.3 million people. 40 to 60 percent of the workforces in the BPO industry on an annual basis move, leave the company. 40 to 60 percent of 1.3 million people. Why do they move? Because that's their vehicle for career change. Not, they can't see any internal or organisational move for themselves, so they will move for an extra 2,000 pesos a month and they'll move to another organisation and you lose that skill that you've invested in, training and upskilling into your organisation simply because you haven't had the vehicles to be able to engage them and make sure that they can see what their progression path is. So it's a, a big problem that we, we faced in, in the workforce and we needed some, certainly some, some great tools to be able to come along and, and, uh, and bridge this gap. So with the, with the social collaboration tools that we have, we're being able to engage with all of our workforce and now we're getting some pretty productive and engaged conversations backwards and forwards. As a HR arena, you're engaged with 
not just the board members, but also with all of the workforce to be able to facilitate that sort of a, a conversation. And therefore, we can find out who the Mr. Aikinsons are in our organisation, who has some really great ideas of how to do things in the business. And then you as HR professionals can take that to management and say, listen, we've got some really great ideas this month. These employees have put themselves forward and said these ideas, this is the sort of things that's coming out and help grow that bottom line and help grow the business as well. And then you're the valued person of the, the CEO and the CFO being able to drive that business change with a positive effect. You didn't have to come up with the ideas. Again, it's all down to mentors and your employees are mentors in their own right. They have their own ideas. They have their own thoughts about what they think the business should be and how we can grow the business. So therefore we need to tap into them as a HR department and make them our mentors to facilitate those ideas coming to us. Really, I guess my thoughts around the, the engagement, certainly I have many ideas in, uh, in what I consider to be engagement. However, you know, again, a few years ago, you know, I used to pick up a telephone, I used to communicate with somebody, I'll meet you at the Dairy Queen down the road. And that was set in stone because I never had a mobile device. I didn't have email, I didn't have any other communication. So as soon as I put down the phone, that was it. You had to be there at a certain time because that's how you're going to connect. People are far more mobile now. You don't, you know, people are communicating on the go. I'm stuck in traffic, I'm here, I'm there, I'm everywhere. Um, so therefore, uh, you're getting, you know, minute by minute, hour by hour, updates on people's movements, what people are doing, hey, let's change a venue, this one's closed. Our lives are, are really mobile activated to be able to, to do whatever we want. So in the workforce, we need to be able to continually manifest ideas and thoughts coming backwards and forwards from our employees, and that's engagement. As soon as, like I said before, we turn off Facebook for a day, people would feel completely disengaged in this world today which is very different than it was 10, 15 years ago. So we need to be very mindful of the way businesses work and, uh, and certainly uh, continually as a HR department feed that information and get that information across. Minimising time, you need tools that you can do things instantly with. If something changes today, uh, you need to be able to do it. Marina Bay Sands in Singapore rolled out Jam. It's a social collaboration tool. But what they do is they post videos of a morning to all of the hotel staff to how to make up the room for the day. So you know that they put little chocolates on the beds and they turn down the sheets and they put little gifts and, and all these sorts of things in the rooms. Well, every couple of days that changes and they make up the room slightly differently. So they needed a tool to be able to engage with thousands of staff that are going through the different rooms to be able to communicate with them every day, every second day, on how the rooms change, and it's as instant as putting a video on there, this today is how we're gonna make up the rooms. That's engagement. So they don't have to pull everybody into a hall and tell them verbally. They've got a video, it shows them exactly what to do. They put it on their, their, their mobile device, and they watch it, and they do it in every single room. That's engagement. The uh, agile learning, these sorts of tools, learning, performance and goals all link into this uh, mobile media. So we'll be able to, to save time. People do things on the go these days, people travel. You want to be able to do my activities in my time. No longer do I want to sit in a classroom. No longer do I have to go to the office to be able to do something. I'm not feeling well today, I want to work from home. But you know what, I can still do my learning. So why can't I do my three hour training course or compliance course from wherever I am? So that's being able to, be, to facilitate the agile learning is key. Um, transferring performance management and certainly uh, connecting and being productive with the uh, employees, they need to see the scope of the business. They need to understand your business as well as you do. Um, and sometimes that's a challenge within an organisation. Uh, however, with the, again, with a, the simple tools that we use, we'll be able to communicate with people and make sure that they're far more productive and making sure they're feeling a part of not only their overall learning stream, so where they're progressing to, what, what are my targets to hit so that I'm contributing to my manager and, and their manager, but also in, in a way that it's very clear and concise that 
what's my learning options to be able to go sideways or, or go into another position and uh, be able to communicate in this, this way. We, we get a lot of transactional work in HR. We've traditionally been a transactional house. We do everything. People come in, queries on HR, and we, we've always spoken about, certainly a couple of presenters this morning was talking about becoming more strategic. And being more strategic means I have to drop my administrative duties. That's never going to happen. We have to do our day-to-day -day work. So therefore, I need a way to say, how can I reduce my transactional workload? How can I facilitate that information going to the employees so they won't bring us all these queries and transactional work? And so therefore, they're more self-sustained in the information and the ability to do their stuff so that I can sit down and work harder on how can I move the business forward and, and move HR to be far more strategic. And that's the sort of tools that you need. Really, uh, one of the uh, Gallup um, polls that, that was done, for example, was really 13% of employees say that they felt engaged at work. This is, again, over uh, a large population of workforces. And, and to me, in this day and age, with the technology that we have, it's a ridiculous number, 13% felt engaged. So we need to be able to get out there and make sure we've got this interaction or we're going to lose good people and we're going to, to, to miss the opportunity to be able to grow as a business. The tools that I speak about really um, come in, in a very user friendly or in, an intuitive interface and again it comes back to I didn't get Facebook training, I didn't get WhatsApp training. So how, how can I use a tool for my business that doesn't require pulling everybody into a classroom for four hours to give them training? I need to be able to roll out tools that I can pick up and just use. Because again, learning is a big burden on the business and, and people sitting in a training course are not being productive somewhere else. So it affects the bottom line again. So being able to have a, a, a nice, easy look and feel being able to give managers mobile applications such as I want to look at the performance and goals, uh, how it's tracking for the month, I want to be able to uh, approve people's leave, I want to be able to do everything on the go, I want to do it on my mobile phone. And it's over the years that there's been mobile applications that have come out onto the marketplace, but some of them have not necessarily been that intuitive, so therefore it still takes training and you can only do some functions and not others. So nowadays the suite of products that are, that are out there means that I can do all of my jobs. Even my to-do linked to my Outlook calendar, it comes up on the same application as my performance and goals, what's my training course, let's go in and, and communicate using my social collaboration tool, I'm not too sure about this learning event, how can I interact with this? So these sorts of tools need to be interactive, they're part of their everyday job. Uh, and that they do, but also it gives them a, the ability to see how they're fitting into the overall structure of the organisation as well. Driving results. This is an interesting slide. I'm not too sure if it's going to be all that visual up the back, but uh, really it's what, what, what we're talking about is, is direct impact and indirect impact that employees have on the engagement. So really uh, career growth opportunities, employee development, these sorts of things are, are direct impact. You know, how can I you know, line of sight individuals to company performance? These things are, are direct. As part of my role, these are the sorts of things. But the indirect, the pride about the company. I don't know if somebody's proud to work for me or not. I do now because they'll feed back to me and I have a vehicle for them to feed back information and I can get a, a sense and a trend if they're happy or they're not happy. Again, Mr. Aitken at Yahoo used Twitter. As a company, I would never have known that he was unhappy unless I was linked to him on Twitter. Okay, so you need a tool to be able to, to get a sense for how people are feeling, seeing their, their personal wealth as far as their, their value within the organisation. And it's very important in this workforce. I mean, uh, I'm very proud to have a, a Filipino workforce. Uh, 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 apart from uh, a couple of white men in this room here today, every single one of our workforce is, uh, is a Filipino. And it's something we're proud on and growing our, our Filipino base simply because we believe in the talent in this country. There is not one role that we have as an organisation that cannot be fulfilled by a Filipino and in many cases better than what we see in our global and regional colleagues. Um, I've been uh, blessed to work with many organisations over the years. 
one of the BPO uh, organisations we've been dealing with in the last six months. The, uh, the head of the, the HR and, and organisational development and projects, uh, a lovely Filipino lady here in this country, has just been promoted to report to the global COO in Sweden. And the CEO is picking her house and picking the schools for her children to move next month. The, the ability for Filipino workforce to get out and be front and centre on the global stage is there and it is today and we see it in organisations that we deal with and, and there's no reason why any other HR professional is, is on the back foot in this room uh, but again for them it was down to employee engagement, the mentors that she had, the feedback from the workforce really enabled her to shine on a global stage of the initiatives that they were doing in the Philippines which had a direct effect on the bottom line which made the global uh, board level stand up and take notice why are they doing it better in in the Philippines than we are in Europe or in America and so it was a very very big success story and, and great for her career aspirations moving forward as well so these sorts of uh, abilities to engage with employees really does have a tangible effect on the bottom line and as long as you can prove that and put tangible numbers with with good analytics in front of the CFOs and the CEOs of the company, you will get front and centre as far as, well, what do you need? What sort of things can we help you with to help us grow that bottom line? They don't want to talk about, you know, well, how do we make people feel better? That's not what a CEO or a CFO want to hear. But if you can show them how it's affecting their bottom line, they will sit straight up in their chair and be more than happy to engage with you on an ongoing basis to make sure that that's your positive impact to the organisation, so therefore you will be there every single time. The, make, the benefits of making work social is just not from a HR department, it really affects all parts of your business. So whether you're in the HR department where you can reduce training costs, you can streamline your HR processes, you can get out there and field information uh, and, and really engage and, and make change programs again being socially collaborative between your employees makes all your change management process a lot easier. In the old days we used to do change management. It would be email blasts, it would be getting people in the rooms, information sessions, town halls, all this sort of information and time is spent on trying to do change within an organisation. It used to be very, very painful. Being able to implement a tool to be able to say, okay now we're going to introduce a new performance and goals or we're now we're going to introduce um, a, a, uh, a new uh, flexible benefit scheme next month. Getting feedback, collaboration, that change process is normally the thing that's missing in a change man management program, they used to be dictatorships. We used to tell our employees what was coming, what was happening. Okay, that was engagement. Okay, so nowadays being able to say we're going to do these programs and get feedback from your employees as to why they will or they won't work is just as important as it is running out these initiatives that we see will have an, an impact on the bottom line but it's engaging in employees. We could have a bigger impact by getting our employees in, engaged and, and certainly uh, helping them feel like they're part of the process. So when we roll this out they're now engaged and they're supporting it. You're not going to get as much resistance as we used to in the past. So that's key to us. Sales, again, you can uh, sales cycles by sharing information by the sales agents, whether they're across the regions, they're in the provinces, depending on what your workforce is like, being able to get them to communicate with each other on an ongoing basis, daily basis in their groups being able to, to give ideas to each other on how to make better sales helps you as an organisation grow and affects your bottom line as well. So these sorts of initiatives, it's not just about HR initiatives, it's also about sales initiatives, customer service, marketing, all of these areas you can help with communication, clear communication across the groups. IT used to be a classic example where they used to live in their own little silo. I used to think it was that little room off to the side with the flashing lights and lots of cables and they used to live in there and eat in there and they only talked to each other in there and they didn't really have anything to do with the business. We used to onboard people, they wouldn't get their laptops in time or their telephone in time. 
all of these sorts of activities used to be you know, everybody acting in their own silos. So to create an onboarding group so that everybody was there, they knew when people were joining, where they were going to be. If things change in the last minute, updating information into these groups, being able to inform all of the different silos creates a much broader group of people making sure that they're taking responsibility for things happening within your organisation. So therefore it helps you streamline the onboarding process and makes the, the onboarding of an employee, perfectly frank, a much more enjoyable scenario because that can sometimes be a, I've got to front up at nine o'clock, I know I'm going to have to do four hours of paperwork and then I don't know where I'm going to go, am I going to have a lap? You know, these sorts of things, you can add these people to the group, information sending to these people before the day they even start. So they're very clear on how they're being onboarded and how they're coming into the organisation. And you've given them the employee handbook, all of their responsibilities, all of the documentation that they need to be onboarded before they've even stepped in the door. So really, what we try and do is, is we help HR departments hire the right workers. Yes, there are uh, plenty of recruitment uh, aspects that we have as part of our tools, uh, but really it's about the end-to-end -end process of onboarding to terminate. So getting people in, positive impact on the front end, making sure that they're engaged in the middle, and then hopefully they'll be with your organisation for many years, not just looking for the next quick buck, going out there trying to, to leave you, going across to another organisation for another thousand pesos, and you're losing good people, and then you're... So really, what we try and do is, is we help HR departments hire the right workers. Yes, there are uh, plenty of recruitment uh, aspects that we have as part of our tools. Uh, but really it's about the end-to-end -end process of onboarding to terminate. So getting people in, positive impact on the front end, making sure that they're engaged in the middle, and then hopefully they'll be with your organisation for many years, not just looking for the next quick buck going out there trying to, to leave you, going across to another organisation for another thousand pesos and you're losing good people and then your cost to hire goes through the roof because you're turning people over, such as the BPO industry, you know, 50 odd percent of the people per annum leaving the doors just for, for two and three thousand pesos, yet you spend 15,000 pesos trying to hire them. <coughs> so these social tools can really help us as an organisation in all facets of the, of the business and, and making sure that we're, we're contributing strategically as a HR department and, uh, and making sure that all of our employees are part of that feedback and communication process so that they don't feel disengaged at any point of the time. <clears throat> so that's really my, my take on em employee engagement. I just wanted to touch very quickly on um, what we did. Uh, Darcy certainly had a uh, a couple of slides on, on synchrony. We really, we, we've focused on the HR and RPO business for, for uh, some time now and certainly from a, uh, success factors, uh, we're, we're sort of the, uh, I guess SAP looks at us from a, a one-stop shop. We can sell the licenses, a value-added reseller, we can implement, we have managed services, we run payrolls for, for companies in this country such as Total, Phoenix and these organisations. We, uh, we support the administration processes and, and IT services. We do web development and all that, mainly in the, in the HR field, but not limited to that. We certainly do web development, uh, RPO recruitment for, for other organisations as well. But that's pretty much us, us in the business. Um, we're here to stay. We're very proud of our company. We're very proud of our, our workforce. And, uh, and both Darcy and I are a big advocate on the, the employee engagement, and making sure they're feedback to us is just as valuable. Uh, it's more of a collaborative business change. Certainly moving into Singapore and Australia becomes even more important to us to make sure that we're communicating with the teams on a, on a seamless nature. So our tools enable us to do that. We're not relying on email only traffic and, and trying to do communication through that way. Um, and, and we certainly have a, a grasp on, on how we can grow as a business based on everybody's input from an organisation. Um, so aligning your business, my final note, you'll be happy that I'm sticking to, to time, is really uh, leveraging Synchrony's team. We have a, a team that's followed us, uh, Darcy is, uh, is the shepherd and we're all the sheep 
and uh, we've all been flowing in the, in the same fields for many years now and, uh, and we talk about these, these guys called Northgate, Arinzo and Shaw. Most of our workforce has travelled from company to company with us and uh, we're very, very proud as an organisation. We have very, very loyal employees and, and I totally believe it's down to the engagement that we have with them and the expertise that they have and the value that we give them and they can see the value that they have as well with us. So thank you very much for your time.